before we even get started with this video, I have an announcement. Your girl reached 100 subscribers. I am so happy and I am so excited and I am so thankful and grateful for all of you. Thank you so much. Please keep telling people to subscribe and share, share, share my videos. Thank you. Hey YouTube family, it's your girl Show the OT, your fave occupational therapist here to help you and others live their best lives. Let's get started. All right, so you guys already know what this video is about today because you've read that title. We're gonna learn the difference between occupational therapy and physical therapy. All right, honey, let's get started. So, I get so many questions when I talk to my family and my friends. Um, what is the difference between PT and OT? Because, you know, everybody knows what PT is. PT's out there, PT's known. People know what physical therapy is. And so sometimes people get confused. Is occupational therapy the same thing as physical therapy? It's not. OTs work really, really close with PTs, but we are not the same. Hence why we have different names, but I'm gonna leave that there. <laughs> so uh, I'm just gonna give you um, a general little summary of the differences between the two and then throw in some like some differences towards the end about like things you need to do as far as education wise and like differences in pay and stuff like that towards the end just for people who are trying to figure out should I go into PT or should I go into OT? That's up to you, but I'm here to give you the information, information you need to make a good and informed decision. Okay, again, have my laptop here, do not mind me. Okay, so I'm just gonna tell you what is PT. So physical therapy, and let's, let's start here. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of the similarity between PT and OT. So PT and OT are both rehabilitative professions. So both professions work to decrease and decrease the worsening of the condition, if that makes sense. So we aim to get them back to their original function. So rehab, like we want you to be back where you were before that injury or diagnosis, disability, what have you. But the difference between OT and PT lies here. So PT, Physical therapy is all about the physical, all about the body and all about that injury or impairment that the person has. So let's see, um, an intervention is something that a therapist does in order to get the person back to where they originally were. It's like our treatment. An intervention is kind of like our treatment. That's a good way to say it. And so a PT's intervention is going to focus on regaining strength in whatever area of their body that they lost their strength in or regaining range of motion. And range of motion is basically the amount of movement that somebody has in a joint. So let's say our shoulder joint. Um, if I can take my arm from the side of me and bring it all the way up over my head, then I, pr I have really good range of motion in my shoulder joint. But if I can't, if I bring it to my side and I can only bring it up about this far, then it's, it's not that great. So we probably need to work on that range of motion. And so PT focuses on strengthening, range of motion, balance, all that good stuff. And PT also really only focuses on those gross motor functions. And gross motor functions are just those big movements. So walking. So when you're walking, you need the strength of your legs. You need the ability to move your legs 
as big as possible. You also need the ability to stay balanced while you're walking. And so walking and balance while sitting, all of that is PT's realm and domain. They're just trying to like get those big motor, fo motor functions back to where you had them before your disability or your condition. Okay, and I'm just giving you the brief rundown of PT because that's not my realm, but that's what I've learned from OT school because we have to learn about the professions that we're working with in order to know what's their lane and what's our lane. And so OT differs from PT because it doesn't necessarily focus on just the impairment of the person. It focuses on the entire person. So yes, we recognize that this person has an impairment, they have a disability or a condition, but we look at that condition and we're like, how is that condition affecting your everyday life? How is it affecting your routines, your habits, your roles? And we look at that and we figure that out and so, our interventions or our treatment plan usually utilize some form of doing the thing that you're having trouble doing since you're impaired. And so our interventions differ from PT because PT focuses on exercises, like I said, strengthening. So they really wanna do those exercises so that they can strength, strength, strength. OT does exercises too, but most of the time when an OT is doing an exercise, it's gonna be paired or followed up by an occupation. So we might, um, we might have somebody squeeze some therapeutic. That's considered an exercise for OT. Squeeze some therapeutic so that we can get those muscles in your hands loosened up. But then after we're done squeezing that therapeutic, we're gonna try tying your shoes or we're gonna try a cooking task. So all of our exercises are always, almost always paired with an occupation. And that's where PT and OT differ. PT's like mainly exercise-based, exercise-based, exercise-based because their goal is just to strengthen your muscles, strengthen those joints and to get you balanced and getting your body, it's just focused on your body, getting your body back to its original state. But OTs are like, just getting your body back to that original state doesn't necessarily mean you know how to do the things that you used to know how to do. So it's our, our turn to come in and help you practice and help you get those experiences and tips that you need in order for you to be able to do the task and the activities that you originally were able to do. I hope that makes sense. I feel like I was kind of just talking, but I hope that makes sense. And so, like I mentioned, PT, gross motor functions, OT, are fine motor and gross motor. I think a lot of people assume that OTs only deal with fine motor, only deal with the hands and the fingers, but we really don't. We deal with the entire body. OTs take a holistic approach. So we deal with the entire body, including the mind and the brain. That is another difference between OT and PT. OTs can do cognitive repairs and memory repairs. So we have the ability to work in that, that department as well. So if someone has cognitive delays or impairments, an OT may be able to go in and figure out ways to you know, uh, help them with their memory and help them get back to where they used to be. Um, let me think. Another difference between OT and PT would have to be that we, like I said, do not just solely deal with the body. We do deal with the body, but not just only the body. We can also make environmental modifications. So we can go into the home and we can, you know, install grab bars in a shower or we can move around the furniture so the layout is more feasible for somebody who has a walker. Um, PT, not so much, that's really not their realm. They really just focus on getting your body back to that original state, like trying to get you back to where you were before, trying to get that knee joint as strong as it was before, trying to get your balance as stable as it was before. And so, like I said, PT and OT, they are similar and they work together because 
you they need the patient needs that balance and they need that strength in order to do the occupations and so pt works with them to get that strength back while ot comes in and helps them use that strength that they're learning or regaining with pt to use it in their occupations that are meaning meaningful to them so let's let's have a little example a little example let's do that so um let's say see somebody has a knee replacement surgery so pt they're gonna come in and they're gonna do those exercises and they're gonna do those stretches in order to get that knee back to its original function and they're also gonna work on balance because your knee is a pretty important joint for walking and mobility so they're gonna come in and they're gonna strengthen and stretch and get that range of motion together for that knee joint an OT will then come in and they're going to educate the patient on per precautions and I'm let me go back I'm pretty sure PT probably does that as well they probably educate on precautions because you know, precautions are very important because we don't want them to revert back to the injury. And so uh, we're both going to educate them on the precautions that they need to take because they have just had this major surgery. And so we're going to come in, we're going to educate them on their, their precautions that, need, that they need to take so they don't have to have another surgery. And then we're also going to do some occupation-based tasks that are going to be difficult for them since they've had this surgery. So we might help them with a cooking cooking task and help them with different ways to manage their fatigue because somebody who's just had a knee replacement surgery is gonna be extremely easily to tire. And so we're gonna help them, you know, like while they're cooking, you don't have to be standing the whole time to cook. You can bring a stool in and you can sit on the stool while you're cooking so that you're not tiring yourself out. And we can also teach them ways to, um, a different routine in cooking. So instead of finding the items as you cook, Go find all the items at the beginning so all of them are in one place so that you are not moving as much around the kitchen and you're not tiring yourself out as quickly. Um, another thing that we can, as OTs can do, is to go into that home and modify the home so that we know um, that they're being safe in their home. And so installing grab bars in the shower so that they have something to hold, to, hold on to when they're in the shower. Ha getting them a shower bench so that they can sit down while they're taking a shower. So again, they're not getting as fatigued as they would if they were standing up. So there's a lot of examples and a lot of things that OTs could do for somebody with a knee replacement. But I'm gonna stop there. Those are just some examples. And like I said, I don't know the ins and outs of PT, but for the most part, PT is just gonna come in and focus on exercising and focus on strength and range of motion and balance, which are all really important things. I'm just letting you know the difference between physical therapy and occupational therapy. <sighs> okay, I think those are like the main differences for um, everything. And now I'm just gonna give you a little bit um, of like random facts that I found about the differences between OT and PT. So if you're interested in either one of those fields, like maybe these will be useful to you while you're trying to decide which career path you wanna go down. So while researching, I found out that physical therapy, you can only get a doctorate. So you would have to get a doctor of physical therapy and that would be three years. That's the educational path. There's only one educational path for PT. That's what you have to take. For OT, you can either go for your master's or you can go for your doctorate. And your master's is usually two to three years and your doctorate is two to three years as well. So if you if that's your deciding factor pt you probably have to go a little bit longer ot um you have a choice between a master's and a doctorate and it could be two to three years for licensing in pt and ot so for pt you have to take the 
National Physical Therapy Examination. I think that's what NPTE stands for. And that exam costs $485. And then for occupational therapy, you have to take the NBCOT exam. I think that stands for National Board of Certification in Occupational Therapy. Pretty sure that's what that stands for. And that exam costs $515. So they're both expensive, very expensive. So, <laughs> I mean, you'll be saving a little bit of money if you do physical therapy as opposed to occupational therapy, but they're both pretty expensive. So I don't think that really matters that much. Um, after doing some research, I found out that the median salary for OT is about $82,000 a year. And the median salary for PT is about $85,000 a year. So PT earns a little bit more than OTs on average, but I mean, depending on what area you work in, you can definitely make whatever you see fit, if that makes sense. Um, areas of certification. So both OT and PT have about nine areas of certification. And so areas of certification or areas of specialty, sorry, I'm saying the wrong word. Areas of specialty are like things that you can focus on. And so um, for PT, there are nine. There's geriatrics, neurology, orthopedics, pediatrics, sports, women's health, cardiovascular and pulmonary, clinical electrophysiology, and oncology. Um, so yeah, those are PT specialties. For OT, they have our split up for board certified, sorry, bird, what? Board certified um, specialties and just specialty certifications. So the board certified are gerontology mental health pediatrics or physical rehabilitation and for specialty certification is driving and com community mobility environmental modifications low vision feeding eating and swallowing in school systems and so after doing that research i think i kind of want to go get my certification in school systems. That sounds cool because that's what I'm interested yes. in. Yes. The last thing I guess I wanna say is OT and PT work very close together, like I said, but we do have very different roles, but we are both very important professions. I guess that's the only tidbit that I wanna end off on because I don't want people to think just because I'm OT, I think OT is better than PT. No way. I think we're both really important professions. And I just want to give you guys some information to make informed decisions about what area of um, profession you'd like to go into. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. Whoop, whoop, another one down. I'm just like, you know, cranking these out. I can't believe it. I'm just doing my thing. Okay, let me stop. But Thanks so much for watching. I want you guys to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys.